live from the Washington, D.C. area. It's the Inside Scoop, all the news that our viewers want to know. Now, here's the host. Good evening. I'm Pastor Sarah Scherschlicht of Peace Lutheran Church in Mason District. I'm also a board member of the Faith Alliance for Climate Solutions, and I'll be the moderator of today's debate among the four Democratic primary contenders for chair of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. This will be the first primary election in years for this important position. The primary election will take place on Tuesday, June 11th. I urge you to vote. The Faith Alliance for Climate Solutions is one of 11 organizations hosting tonight's debate. The complete list will be shown at the end of the broadcast. Known as the Fairfax Healthy Communities Coalition, we share a vision for Fairfax County, where the county commits to eliminating greenhouse gas pollution by 2050, ensuring transit, walking, bicycling, and other modes of active transportation are well-funded, safe, convenient, and accessible for people of all ages, and providing housing opportunities for people of all incomes, ages, and stages of life. Now let me introduce the candidates for tonight's debate. They are Ryan McElveen, a member of the Fairfax County Public School Board serving at large. Jeff McKay, a member of the Board of Supervisors representing the Lee District. Alicia Plerhopolis, Director of Georgetown Law's Social Enterprise and Nonprofit Law Clinic. And Tim Chapman, Managing Member of Reston-based Chapman Development. Thank you all for joining us this evening. We'll start with opening statements and then move to questions. Candidates will have a minute and a half for each opening statement. Ms. Plerhopolis drew first, so we will begin with her. Great. You may go ahead. Thank you. Well, first, thank you so much for having me here tonight. Um, my name is Alicia Plerhopolis, and I'm running for chairman of the Board of Supervisors. I am a law professor at Georgetown, where I run the Social Enterprise and Nonprofit Law Clinic. Clinic. Um, there we work with small businesses and nonprofits, many of which who have mission to reduce their environmental impact. I'm running to improve the quality of life of every Fairfax County resident. Fairfax County has grown and we've prospered, but we've left many people behind and we're often asked to settle for less. Other municipalities that I see are passing us by, whether it's on affordable housing, education, or climate change. I believe we can and we should do better. Fairfax County residents deserve better. We deserve a chairman who treats affordable housing as a crisis because that's what it is. We deserve a chairman who treats climate change as a crisis because that's what it is. And we deserve a chairman who treats the 20,000 trailers at our schools as a crisis because that is what it is. We need revenue to tackle these challenges. And as chairman, here's how I'd get it. I'd put the meals tax back on the table, but not on the ballot. I'd work with our Northern Virginia delegation to get an exemption to the Virginia code. Arlington is exempted and so should we be. We can use it for schools and for affordable housing, which would also then give us resources to fight our climate crisis. As a Harvard-educated, Yale law-trained la lawyer with a master's in public affairs, I've got Thank the you, experience. Thank you, Ms. Peropolis. We'll come back to you later. Thank you. And now, Mr. McKay. Uh, Thank you very much, and thank you to the Faith Alliance and partners for sponsoring this debate. I'm Jeff McKay. Uh, for the past 11 years, I've been the Lee District Supervisor on the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors, and I'm proud of the county that we've built. Uh, we lead the country. We lead the state in, in many areas. I've had an opportunity to play significant leadership roles at the regional, uh, state level, and county level at the Virginia Association of Counties, uh, pushing for our progressive values in school funding and environmental protection. Uh, at the regional level, serving on the WMATA Board of Directors and the Northern Virginia Transportation Commission, fighting for transit, multimodal uh, development and solutions for bicyclists and pedestrians. And at the county board level, as both the chair of our legislative committee, where I've testified in Richmond on important environmental matters, and as the chairman of our budget committee, which is the most important thing we do every year, which is putting forward a budget in Fairfax County that displays our progressive values. I'm very proud of the record of success that I've had on the board for the last 11 years, and I think we deserve a chairman who has the experience to navigate through a complicated county uh, to get solutions. Um, I am a solutions-oriented person uh, who has a record of success and somebody who's willing to put all of that effort into promoting 
uh, Fairfax County and make, making sure that tomorrow is a better place uh, for our children, for my children, and for our community and ensure that Fairfax County continues its progress. Thank you, Mr. Thank McKay. You. Thank you. And now on to Mr. McElveen. Good evening. My name is Ryan McElveen, and I've had the privilege of serving you for the past eight years on the Fairfax County School Board, where I've been a champion of many things, including fresher, healthier food for our children, protections for our LGBTQ community, and also gun violence prevention, sexual uh, misconduct prevention, and human trafficking prevention, all of which are applicable at the county level. But out over my eight years on the school board, I've seen a growing divide between the haves and have-nots in our county, effectively creating two Fairfaxes. I hope to bridge that divide with a campaign on education, innovation, and opportunity for all. I'm going to be fighting for universal pre-kindergarten for our children. I'm going to be fighting for a sustainable building and transportation infrastructure, as well as internet access for all. And finally, I'm going to be fighting for uh, uh, apprenticeships and internships for all of our community members as well as affordable housing so that everyone can afford to live in our county. My day job is at the Brookings Institution where I oversee centers on China studies in Washington and Beijing and I travel the world and I see the potential that our county has for the future and I'm going to be fighting to ensure that all of our residents in Fairfax County have access to that American dream. Thank you Mr. McElveen and now on to Mr. Chapman. Good evening, my name is Tim Chapman. I, I love Fairfax County. I've chosen to raise my children in Fairfax County, but the Fairfax County I see has become so unaffordable that it mirrors many of the most expensive communities in the United States. It's so unaffordable that full-time employment no longer shields families from homelessness. I believe that we can do better. I believe that the people that struggle in this county matter and I believe that the playing field needs to be leveled for all residents of Fairfax County in affordable housing and education and in, the and in the environment. And that's what I'll fight for as chair of the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Thank you very much. Now to the questions which have been compiled by the Fairfax Healthy Communities Coalition. I will ask a question and each candidate will have one and a half minutes to answer. Due to time constraints, there will be no direct rebuttals. However, candidates may use some of their allotted time to comment on other candidates' statements. We will rotate the order of the candidates, beginning in this round of questions with Mr. McElveen. Let's begin. Washington, D.C. recently passed the Clean Energy D.C. Omnibus Act of 2018, which among other bold climate-related goals, commits to a 100% renewable electricity supply across the district by 2032. Montgomery County, Maryland, Atlanta, and Cincinnati are among other local jurisdictions around the nation working on similar goals. What are your thoughts on such a goal for Fairfax County, and what will be your priorities for reducing countywide and regionwide greenhouse gases? Well, that's a goal that I absolutely support for Fairfax County. I was the first among the candidates you see here tonight to sign on to the Virginia Green New Deal, and I believe in all of the things that are espoused in that. First and foremost, getting Fairfax County to a 40 percent renewable energy um, uh, standard by 2030 or 2040 and a complete uh, reliance on renewable energy by 2050. You know, I've over my time on the school board, I've worked on, on this issue um, in, in many ways. We are the most efficient um, school system in terms of energy in the country. We have more buildings, 173 in total, that have, have reached um, uh, Energy Star designation. I began my efforts on the school board fighting for solar power in our schools. I was the co-sponsor of um, a renewable energy uh, standard for our capital improvement plan, and I haven't been doing this in election year. I've been doing it throughout my tenure on the school board. And perhaps most inf influentially, I have been the person behind the removal of styrofoam trays in our schools, converting those to recyclable uh, cardboard. Um, we know that we can take small actions that can inc incrementally get us to a renewable energy future for Fairfax County. Mr. McKay. 
Um, I, too, support that goal. Um, I have uh, supported our Fairfax Green Initiative, which is a very robust uh, way to address climate change as we move forward. Uh, I support development of a community-wide climate action plan and resiliency plan, and I also accelerated the goals of our operation energy operational energy strategy, including funding it uh, and putting the money behind it. I've been a leader uh, in promoting solar freedom, both in Richmond and at our county level. Uh, forcing uh, people to increase the number of buildings that they're evaluating for solar power, particularly on the school side, uh, where we can set a real example for the rest of the country in renewable energy. Uh, but we also need the state's support, and this is where it's really important to have relationships with people at the state level to break down the monopoly and the lockhold that Dominion Power has on the Commonwealth of Virginia and our General Assembly, and make sure that municipalities can get the freedom to do the types of things that their public wants them to do, and that right now they have restrictions placed at, at, in, in Richmond on doing some of these things. It's crazy that that's the case. Uh, we need to be robust in breaking down uh, Dominion's lock in Richmond, but we also need to be much more flexible and letting counties address these issues. Frankly, uh, we can no longer rely on the federal government when it comes to climate change, so it's going to be up to our counties and states to clean up our environment, and that's what I have a record of doing in Fairfax, and that's what I will continue fighting for as we move forward. Thank you, Mr. McKay. Mrs. Porhopoulos. Yes. So let's be clear. We are in a climate crisis, um, and this is a question of life and death for our communities. For we need to be bold, we need to be a leader, and yet we have followed, we've muddled through. It's thanks to the very hard work of some of the sponsors of this debate that we are now seeing Fairfax County take a position and try to put together a community action plan for climate change. I applaud those steps, although I do think this would have been better to have, have accomplished five to 10 years ago. So in terms of what we, re we need to do, we need to throw everything that we have at this climate crisis. Um, you know, I can go on a list of things that we need to be doing, um, and the list is very long. We need to make sure that, you know, we're working with the private sector, some experience that I have of working with the small businesses in the private sector to reduce our greenhouse gas admissions. I already do this in part in my job at Georgetown. I work in social enterprise, many of which, as I said, um, are working to reduce their own environmental impacts. We need to create incentives for the business sector and set targets. Uh, let the business private sector, however, innovate. We shouldn't have uh, government overly, um, um, we should be incentivizing but letting them innovate. Thank you, and Mr. Chapman. Thank you. Uh, obviously, I support this initiative. Um, what you'll see tonight is a recurring theme for me, which is what we have is a lack of leadership. We should have been moving towards this four or five years ago, uh, be it the environmental issues we have, affordable housing issues, or any other issues we have, we always seem to be trailing uh, Arlington and other areas. Our leaders have relegated themselves to a land use board and they hide behind the Dillon Rule. There's absolutely no reason why we can't have solar panels on schools other than funding. We need leadership and as chair, I will take on that mantle and provide that leadership. Thank you. For our next question, we'll start with Mr. McKay. A growing percentage of the county's population is concerned about rising housing costs and the loss of affordable housing options. A recent county study showed that 15,000 units will be needed over the next 15 years for low-income households. That is in addition to a current shortage of 31,000 units. Identify three things that you would do as chairman to make a substantial dent in the county's affordable housing shortage. Great question. Uh, first, I will name three things, and there are three things I've done. Um, I'm proud to represent a community that has embraced affordable housing in my own Lee district. We lead the county in creation of affordable housing and preservation, construction of new affordable housing. And so educating our public about the importance of it is something we've done in Lee district. Secondly, I'd incentivize our nonprofit uh, providers to step up to the plate. We've approved new funding for them to be able to partner with Fairfax County to help us tackle 
tackle our affordable housing challenges. We have great nonprofits that do great work in housing, and we've now incentivized them financially uh, to step up to the plate. And the third thing I'll, I'll do is what I've already done, which is when development cases come forward, we hold developers' feet to the fire to build the affordable units that are in our ordinance that are required. Uh, and lastly, as we future plan, uh, we need to take the Route 1 and BARC model and put that in place countywide, which is no net loss of affordable units, creation of new high quality affordable units along the Route 1 corridor, and make sure that our jurisdictions around us, and this is a regional challenge, the jurisdictions around us partner with us. We spend over $140 million a year in affordable housing with combined resources. We need to make sure as a region, all of our jurisdictions are working together to solve this very regional uh, problem of affordable housing. And I have a record uh, of supporting affordable housing that's strong, and I have a passion for this issue that I know I'll take Thank to the next level. Much. Thank you. Thank you. And now on to Mrs. Plotopoulos. Yeah. Thank you. Affordability and affordable housing are the, my campaign priorities. We have um, slashed affordable housing funding. We have a penny fund for affordable housing that is now a half a penny fund. Uh, we need to restore that funding, and we also need to go further. I would propose that we look at our comprehensive plan and figure out where we can add units. Right now, 82% of our residential land is zoned for single-family houses. Now, who can afford a single-family house in Fairfax County? Um, we need to make sure that we have homes for our low-income residents, that we have it for our seniors and our millennials. This is an issue that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I have experienced housing insecurity. I have, there has been times in my childhood when I did not have a roof over my head. And so this is a priority for me. It's also one of the reasons that I am not accepting, and I'm the only candidate in this race, that is not accepting money and political contributions from real estate developers. It is a conflict of interest to s accept such large contributions from developers at the same time, the very same time that we are trying to fix our affordability, our affordable housing crisis. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chapman. Thank you. I have a unique perspective on affordable housing because it's not just what I do, it's who I am. Um, at the end of the day, Fairfax County's affordable housing policies aren't working. If they were working, we wouldn't be in an affordable housing crisis. Uh, we are in a crisis, and this budget, they've added one person to the affordable housing staff and $5 million. That's not going to get it done. We need a robust partnership with the Virginia Housing Development Authority, with HUD, with private industry, and we need speed and agility to get affordable housing done. We need to look at the land that Fairfax County owns to get it done. There are so many things that need to happen that aren't happening. I'm uniquely qualified to tackle this, um, this problem, but what we've seen so far is lethargy in the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. It's more focused on large development from private developers than it is on the very people that bring us the services that we need. Many of our teachers in Fairfax County cannot afford to live in Fairfax County. I was told by the union that we lose 40% of our teachers every five years because of affordable housing. If the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors was doing what they should be doing, we would not have this crisis right now. As chair, I will take on this mantle and by 2035, 10% of Fairfax County's housing stock will be affordable. Thank you. And Mr. McElveen. Well, to begin with, I don't have to tell developers not to give me money because they weren't lining up to give me money anyway because they know I'm not going to be fighting for them. I'm going to be fighting for the people that need affordable housing. We know with a Amazon arriving uh, that we are going to see at least 30 percent of those work workers relocate to Fairfax County. And that's not going to just put stress on our lower income populations. It's going to affect our middle in income population as well. So this crisis is just beginning and it's going to be more, it's going to be more widespread than we, we can expect now. In terms in terms of what I would do, we know we need to be funding all the units necessary uh, f uh, in affordable housing um, that have been uh, called, upon, called for. 
I think we need to raise uh, two cents on the tax on, on um, taxable income to fund the fully fund that fund to, to rely on the Virginia Housing Trust Fund as well. I believe that ho affordable housing should be throughout our community, not just in certain pockets. And we need to collaborate with our nonprofits, our, our and our, and look to our public facilities as well for opportunities to build there. And finally, I will hold developers' feet to the fire. And I will ensure that we have workforce housing for our police, fire, teachers, and our county employees, not to mention the, our elderly, our, those who have needs, our youth, and our, also our special needs populations. We have vast needs in Fairfax County, and we have yet to take on this task as it should have been taken on. Thank you. For our next question, we'll begin with you, Mrs. Polarhopoulos. Fairfax County has taken on some ambitious, overarching policy directives like One Fairfax, Health in All Policies, and Fairfax Green Initiatives. Big redevelopment projects, such as the Embark Project on Route 1, will test many of these principles. How will you work to ensure that these good intentions in the policy directives are comprehensively applied and implemented? Thank you. Um, I applaud the One Fairfax policy. I applaud equity. I have experience in, uh, in implementing equity. I have served as the diversity chair for, our, uh, for the law school that I teach, um, making sure that all students and all faculty and all staff, uh, janitors, are treated appropriately and feel welcome and included in our community. That's the same that I would expect of all our Fairfax County uh, employees and staff. In terms of implementing equity, we, we really need a radical, radical shift here. Um, you know, one in four Fairfax County um, children are food insecure. We have 30,000 more people living in poverty. We have 12,000 undocumented immigrants that are undergoing uh, deportation proceedings right now. So our one, Fairfax, uh, our one Fairfax policy needs to touch every last aspect of that. Um, in terms of implementing, I think that we need to boost our staff. First of all, we have one person that is our chief equity officer in Fairfax County with no staff uh, and little support. I feel like that is giving, uh, that's just setting her up for failure, quite frankly. We need it throughout the county, somebody in, a, in every agency looking at these issues through an equity lens. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chapman. Can I have a question again? Yes, Fairfax County has taken on some ambitious overarching policy directives like One Fairfax, Health in All Policies, and Fairfax Green Initiatives. Big redevelopment projects such as the Embark Project on Route 1 will test many of these principles. How will you work to ensure that these good intentions in the policy directives are comp comprehensively applied and implemented? <clears throat> The One Fairfax policy is a laudable policy, but it doesn't have any teeth. It's not a requirement. Um, we, the next chair of the Board of Supervisors needs to be able to work with developers. We can, we can malign them, but at the end of the day, the majority of the uh, revenue that comes into Fairfax County comes from its real estate taxes. We need a chair that has the ability to work with everyone to drive these policies home. And as chair, that's what I'll do. Thank you. Mr. McElveen. One thing that many folks don't realize is that in Fairfax County Public Schools, we have more children in poverty than the entire population of DC public schools. We have one third of our one third of Virginia's uh, English as a second language population is located in Fairfax County. This is not just a local issue; this is a state issue, and we need to continue fighting for funding. Uh, locally, at the state level, and at the federal level so that we can support these populations. One of the things when you look at the history of development in Fairfax County is that it has, over the past several decades, created pockets of poverty. And it is going to be up to the next chairman and the next board of supervisors to overcome those. The one Fairfax policy is a great start, uh, but it is a framework, and it's going to be the actions that follow on that framework that determine our future. 
One of the things that I will be pushing for is community schools. We've seen several in, in the Lee District and Mount Vernon area, um, and we're going to be seeing one in Reston opening up soon. The co-location of facilities is the future of our county because it's going to bring our population together, stop uh, all the traffic in the community from going between various locations, making sure that folks have access in their own communities to all these uh, wonderful public services that we offer. Thank you. And Mr. McKay. Yes, thank you. So these big things you name are passions of mine. I actually played a role in authoring all of them. Uh, the one Fairfax resolution came about as a result of a, a dust up with the school board over Title I school funding. The Fairfax Green Initiatives was a board matter that I jointly sponsored and the Embark Plan is something that I've been in the trenches working on for years to be able to write. I grew up on the Route 1 corridor, that's where I was born and raised, and so I have a passion for all three of these things and how they intersect. If we're going to be one Fairfax, we have to make sure that we take care of all corners of the county. And that means intentionally looking at racial and social justice in every decision we make, how it implement, how it uh, impacts the comprehensive plan, how we write land use plans, how we fund different priorities within the county. Um, I do like to think big. I think all three of these have set us on a path moving forward that's measurable, that we can hold our elected officials accountable for. And as someone who grew up in the Route 1 corridor, seeing these inequities at a very young age is why I ran for office in the first place. And I'm committed that until people in places like that corridor get the same opportunity and resources as people in all other parts of the county, then our work is still unfinished. But we have to, at a high level, embrace these issues, measure them, and hold our county officials, officials accountable to make sure that they get implemented. Thank you. For our next question, we'll begin with Mr. Chapman. Resource protection areas and floodplains delineated across our streams and rivers are designed to limit erosion and protect our citizens from flooding. Yet these undeveloped protected zones offer a tempting target for developers hungry for low-cost alternatives to redeveloping in built-up locations. Given the projected sea level rises and changes in storm intensities due to climate change, what can Fairfax County do to maintain protections along our waterways? Well, I think the first thing we can do is, is prohibit it. Um, the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors has the ability to do so, and they haven't done it. And many of the things that we've dealt with tonight were, where we're talking about these environmental issues, we find ourselves, Ryan and Alicia and I, sitting here today because Fairfax County has not taken a leadership role. They haven't prohibited things like this, and they haven't taken the steps necessary to prohibit them. And as chair, that's what I'll do. Thank you. Mr. McElveen. Great. So uh, first of all, our county needs to uh, adopt a energy and climate action plan. That work has begun with the creation of the Joint Environmental um, Committee, the, the task force, the JET, um, but we have to see it through. Secondly, we need to develop a resiliency plan. Fairfax County is a coastal county. We're right on the Potomac River. And if you go down to Mount Vernon, uh, to Mason Neck, you see that's where um, some of the most expensive uh, houses are in our county. And so we need to work with those property owners and make sure that they are prepared what, for what's to come. Uh, it, we also have to stop stop development in our wetlands and in our on our on our coast. It's um, it should be a simple thing, but uh, it has not happened to date. And finally, I would say that we need to increase our collaboration with with state and federal officials on these issues because climate change is an international issue. We see how our, fo our representatives in Washington are not leading on this issue, and we have to act on it at a local level to make progress. Thank you. And Mr. McKay. Thank you. Well, I obviously have a different perspective. I think Fairfax County is doing a lot. I think Ryan is right that we've been left behind by our federal and state officials, and we have to keep up that fight at those two levels of government. But there's many things we've done at the county level, not the least of which is in FY 2010, the board adopted the stormwater tax. It was not an easy vote. Uh, we've raised it seven 
years since then, we've increased the stormwater tax, and we're putting in major projects to improve erosion, improve uh, water quality, and address a lot of the drainage issues that exist in the county. We're grappling with the Lake Akatink issue right now, and that's a, a result of many, many years of unchecked development. We have much better restrictions in place to address development now. We have to make sure development in the future happens in areas like revitalization areas, areas that have already been paved over and need major upgrades to drainage and stormwater facilities, and make sure we keep development out of the areas that uh, are environmentally constrained. And so that's one of the reasons our comprehensive plans become important, why we try to drive development into transit corridors and revitalization areas. But we've made major headway in stormwater management in Fairfax County. The conditions and requirements that are in place today are far more aggressive than the ones that created many of the stormwater problems that we have in the county now that require us to be addressing them. And so um, I'm proud of the record that we have on this. There's ways we can improve, but we've, we've taken some major steps in Fairfax County. Thank you. And Mrs. Plerhopoulos. Great, thank you. So there is a stream that runs uh, next to my, my house, uh, my neighbor's house, and it, w it would be wonderful to actually be able to uh, take my kids and you know splash around in the stream in, in a, a warm day. But the fact of the matter is, is that we are living with polluted waterways. Um, you know, it's fantastic that the board is now finally, after years, taking steps to enact a climate and energy um, action plan. We also need a resiliency plan. And um, along with the recommendations that came from the Environmental Task Force was a, a recommendation to increase our stormwater, uh, stormwater tax um, this year, which was not adopted by the Board of Supervisors this year. So we still have a long way to go. Um, in terms of, you know, making sure that developers are not building in our floodplains, look, I used to be a real estate finance attorney at a large law firm in New York. I've worked on commercial developments across the entire country. So I know how to interact with developers. I know how to bring everybody to the table. And uh, I know the land use and the zoning world. But the fact of the matter is, is that I'm not going to ha let them have a prioritized, a special interest, a special to be seated at the table. Um, in, in that way, we need to make sure to hold them at arm's length and make sure that they are not building in floodplains and that although they are contributing to our commercial tax base, that we're not Thank giving you. them special priority. Thank you. Our next question, we begin with, with Mr. McElveen. Amazon recently selected a location in Arlington partly because it is walkable bicycle friendly and transit oriented. What will you do to accelerate the transformation of Fairfax commercial corridors into communities that are walkable, bicycle friendly and transit oriented with a true sense of place? So transit really does drive our lives in Fairfax County and that's not a pun, it's the truth. Uh, we know that Metro needs to be expanded. If you look at the blue line down down in the, the Mount Vernon Lee area, that needs to go further south. We know that the orange line needs to be extended further west. If you try and get on either Route 1 or uh, Route 66 in the afternoon, you're going to be um, in very deep in traffic. Uh, in addition to those transit options, we will also need to look at more bus rapid transit as we are seeing um, in Mount Vernon, but also look, look back at Columbia Pike where um, a plan was, was disbanded um, by a surrounding jurisdiction which um, uh, perhaps uh, had planned to spend a little too much money on that project. Uh, in addition, we need to be making our, our uh, continuing to improve our network of sidewalks. There, are, for many years, we have been working to improve that network, and it's just uh, it's too slow in coming. So that we can have uh, safe places for our children, our families to walk, to run, um, to to get to school. Uh, and uh, in terms of bicycling, we do need more, more paths, more roadways that are bicycle accessible. You look at, at Washington, D.C., Arlington as models for this. Things can, are still too spread out in Fairfax County. We do need more co-location of facilities, uh, both in the public sector and in the private sector. We've seen models uh, in the Embark Project in, in the Mosaic District where you can uh, live, work, and play in the same community. And that's what our residents want for the future. Thank you. 
Mr. McKay. Yeah, so this is a really important question. I've been a strong transit uh, supporter, multimodal supporter my entire time in office. We have a bicycle master plan in Fairfax County because I did a board matter saying we should set up a bicycle master plan so that we can connect our bicycle routes uh, throughout the county. We need multimodal uh, solutions and smart streets everywhere in the county. Uh, throughout my district, when VDOT has repaved roads, we've striped bike lanes. We've connected uh, more sidewalks up and down the Route 1 corridor in and around the Springfield area. We've prioritized sidewalk projects near metro stations, near schools. Uh, we need to make sure more school kids can walk to school safely. Uh, that's one of the big challenges we have with greenhouse gas em emissions and, and vehicles and fuel efficiency is we, we're in a culture where too many people have to drive places. We need to make sure that we prioritize our sidewalk investments around schools and transit stations. I'm glad Amazon picked a location next to a metro station. I mean, frankly, if you're going to put in that amount of development, the only way that works is next to a transit station. We have great opportunities in Fairfax County around our transit stations to make sure we can take advantage of future opportunities like that as well. The truth is, people want to live in these environments. They want to live places where they can walk, where they can bicycle safely, and they want to live in environments where they have transportation options, and that includes buses. Buses, trains, bikes, and walking. Thank you. Mrs. Plerhopoulos. So our transit priorities, like most of our priorities, need to be large and aggressive and bold. Um, you know, we the mixed-use developments that we are creating are great, but we, we want to make sure that we're not gentrifying neighborhoods, which is what I mostly see out of the mixed-use developments. Um, we want to make sure, again, that we're building those affordable workforce housing units, um, that we are actually also uh, solving the last mile first mile problem which is really a big problem here in Fairfax County essentially where people get into their cars because they live further than a half mile or quarter mile away from transit and public public transit opportunities. Um, that's going to take some creative thinking. Again, it can be private innovation. It doesn't necessarily always have to be the government. We should be incentivizing private um, innovation in this area. In Reston, for example, we've got autonomous there's the, uh, autonomous vehicles actually working, and that's a private developer who's put that on, uh, on their private, uh, private um, uh, apartment building to get folks from the apartment building to the metro. Um, we also I, I agree we need to do more in bus uh, bus rapid transit as well and also thinking about greening our buses with electric buses uh, and then I'll just say too that you know 50% of the um, commuters that come to Fairfax County through um, uh, from Loudoun, uh, or 50 percent of commuters from Loudoun come into Fairfax County and we need to provide options for them that are transit off. thank you Mr. Chapman Thank you. We've all lived this. Uh, our transportation system in Fairfax County imprisons us in our cars, and it steals time away from our families. I mean, obviously, we can put forth a lot of laudable goals, but what we need is, is we need a transportation system that moves people and not cars, that doesn't unjustly tax the poor. We need a system that um, is designed to deal with ways. I live on a street that's 18 feet wide, and about six weeks ago, my wife called me to let me know that my daughter had almost got hit by a car. My street's 18 feet wide and three quarters of a mile long, and we get 50,000 cars every two weeks that make trips down that street. We need to address these things. We need to be looking forward to take every instant, not just from what we see in Fairfax County, but also from what we see in other jurisdictions where they're tackling the very same problem. And that's what I'll do as chair. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our next question begins with Mr. McKay. Last month, the Joint Environmental Task Force was created by the Board of Supervisors and the Fairfax County School Board. How can the two boards work aggressively toward the goals of greenhouse gas reduction, resiliency, and environmental education? So they must work together aggressively. Uh, the model for the JET is built on the model of the successful children and youth planning team that I've been a part of for years uh, that actually drafted the one Fairfax resolution. So our school board, our county board, have to work on this issue together. 
Uh, my passion for the jet revolves around the fact that the schools own way more buildings than the county does in Fairfax County, and they also are an incubator for our kids. And so if we want to teach our kids about good environmental stewardship, we have a real opportunity to invest in enhancements at our school buildings first, not just to save the environment because it's the morally and financially right thing to do, but as an educational opportunity for our children. And so I'm delighted that this group has been formed. I think any time the school board and county board can be working more collaboratively together the way that I've done with the budget the past couple years, the way that I've done on the successful children and youth planning team that created One Fairfax. We're working for the same people. We should have the same goals and we should get on the same page with a lot of these things. And I think there's an eagerness on both of our boards to tackle this issue as a team. Thank you. Ms. Plerhopoulos. Thank you. Um, the, the school board and the board of supervisors should and, and completely be collaborative. Um, you know, the one thing that we've seen, unfortunately, is the underfunding of our schools year after year. Um, you know, we have 20,000 trailers in our schools. Our teachers for years have been underpaid. Um, even though, even with the competitive salaries that we are now offering, um, I'm not sh quite so sure that they're competitive. I met a, a teacher in Vienna, to, uh, veteran teacher, worked in Fairfax County for seven years and is headed to uh, Arlington because she will be paid $12,000 more a year. And so when we talk about whether our schools are fully funded, I, I, I think about her and I think about whether she would think that our schools are fully funded. Um, in terms of working together on the environment, I want to make sure that uh, we are uh, providing our students with careers of the future, and those are green jobs. I've signed on to the Green New Deal. Uh, I, I appreciate the Green New Deal, New Deal, not just for its environmental aspects, but also because of its social justice mission. It means not leaving anyone behind, not any, leaving low-income communities to behind. And we can work together to ensure that we've got apprenticeships in our schools um, on green jobs, um, we've, got, we're, we've got internships, and that we're putting solars on all of our schools and teaching uh, our students about uh, environmentalism. Thank you. Mr. Chapman. I think we would start by actually having a collaborative relationship together between the school board and the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Oftentimes the school board presents a budget that it believes that the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors will pass. We have 22,000 children in 800 trailers in Fairfax County and we lose 40 percent of our teachers in Fairfax County to other jurisdictions for better pay. Um, as chair, my intention is to raise teachers' pay over the next four years by $10,000. I've also put forward a, an idea of, for public employees for freezing their real estate taxes after five years of employment while they're still employed by Fairfax County. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. McElveen. So for the better part of my tenure on the school board, I've been on the receiving end of underfunded budgets. And that's really what prompted me to run for this office to begin with. Uh, but the question was about environmental sustainability moving forward. And so uh, Fairfax County needs to be as bold as we are large. We are sit on the doorstep of the nation's capital. And we can not only make a local impact, we can make a national impact if we put our minds to it. On the school board, uh, I sponsored the inclusion in our portrait of a graduate of the provision for global citizenship. I believe everyone in Fairfax County should think globally when we think about the environment. It's not just our little segment of the world, it's the entire world at stake. Uh, I have been a proponent for solar. I was behind the effort to get, get it on three schools. That's not enough. We need to continue moving forward. Uh, in terms of things like farm to school, I've been a champion of that. I've been uh, uh, a champion champion of school gardens. And as you heard, I've been influential in the movement to get salad bars in all of our schools that will draw on those uh, school gardens. Agriculture is a place in our community where we can uh, truly build upon um, potential uh, to collaborate with, with schools and uh, uh, other institutions. We heard about jobs, uh, and I think we need to bridge the divides between the K-12 community college and higher education sectors um, so that we are preparing students for jobs of the future in the um, a sustainability field. Uh, we, are, uh, uh, we have so much potential for recycling as well. Thank you. For our next question, we'll begin with Ms. Plerhopoulos. This question addresses who has your ear. 
With a county of this diversity, it can be a challenge to listen to all the stakeholders. All too often, low income and historically disenfranchised people don't get a voice at the table. Whose perspectives are you listening to in order to shape your policies? Please be specific. Okay. Fantastic, thank you. Um, so I think that everybody in this county deserves a seat at the table and deserves, um, every individual deserves to be heard and respected and treated fairly. Um, in terms of who has my ear, I'll, I'll talk about just, you know, the organizations that I am involved with. It's not that they have my ear, but it does go to the fact that I'm thinking about some of the most vulnerable populations in our community. So I am a longtime member um, and has been a member in high school and beyond of our end of, of um, NAACP. I recently joined our Fairfax County NAACP and I know that they're sponsoring this debate and uh, a lot of their uh, legislative priorities are my priorities. Um, I would say too that we have unheard populations in our county, um, undocumented immigrants that don't necessarily get the vote and get get the uh, potential to speak with their supervisors um, and, and, and voice their opinions. You know, we need to make them heard and we need to be supportive of them. Um, parents, you know, I am a parent of two lovely children and I want them to have uh, the same opportunities in our education, in our school system um, that uh, everyone has. So I wanna make sure that we're listening to parents and, uh, and, and supporting our students. Um, the environment. Thank you. There's a Time lot. Is up. <laughs> there are a lot of people. Mr. Chapman. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I've built almost a thousand apartments, and I still own most of them. And uh, it's actually quite easy for me to get my voice heard. Uh, and while we have to represent everybody in Fairfax County, my intention is to represent the single mother that uh, is working two jobs. Uh, I want to hear from her. I want to hear from the people that don't have, that don't have a voice. I want to hear from the people that get up every single day, whether it be in South County or in um, Franklin Farms that's struggling, if not to pay their mortgage, but to put their kids through college. I want to hear from those people. I want to represent those people because guys like me, we're going to be okay. But who needs, who needs to be heard are the ones that don't have the, don't have the access that business owners have, don't have the access that, uh, that people in McLean have or Great Falls have. Those people need to be focused on. We need a priority shift. We have some of the highest income in the country and a 2.4% unemployment rate. If now is not the time to listen to those people, when is? And as chairman, that's what I'll do. Thank you very much. Mr. McElveen, I've been asked by the audience to ask the question again. Whose perspectives are you listening to in order to shape your policies? Please be specific. So I'm the only person at these tables here tonight who has represented our entire county. That is the perspective I bring with me from eight years. I have innovated in reaching out to communities. I, the first thing I did when I got on the school board was create a proposal for video testimonies so that folks who couldn't get to the school board meetings uh, could have their per perspectives represented. I was the first school board member to use social media to outreach to the community. And we've, heard perspect we've seen perspectives from students that would never otherwise have had their perspectives heard. I will reach people where they are as chairman. I will go out into the community as I always have. I bring with me a perspective as someone who, who went and graduated from our schools. I went to one of the most diverse schools in our district, George C. Marshall, where I graduated as class president. From there, I went off to the University of Virginia, a historically white institution that I worked to reform, bringing, bringing forward perspectives of the communities of color. I won a, a school-wide award for my efforts at diversity initiatives. So it's those populations that I'll be looking to, to represent. And finally, 
I'm the only person here who is engaged at an international level um, in an educational institution, bringing perspectives from others. I've championed issues of internationalization in our curriculums, both at, at state institutions and in Fairfax County Public Schools, so that our students' perspectives are all represented in our curriculum, so that we are not uh, focusing on a Western, westernized education system, so that we are listening to everyone. Thank you. And Mr. McKay. Thank you. Um, I, I agree with much of what's been said. I think the most important thing to do is to reach out to people in their place. Uh, and that's something that I've done as county supervisor. I go out into these communities. I go door to door. I talk to people. We host forums. We try to hear from as many uh, stakeholders as we possibly can. And, you know, it's very difficult for a lot of families, especially working families, younger families with children, to sit in a two or three hour night public hearing or to be able to testify in front of the board. So I think it's mandatory that any of your elected officials go out and meet with the community in their place. And, and that's what I've done. And frankly, I think we have a good system in Fairfax County of community collaboration. And the more input we get from the public, the better our public policies are. And so we need to be encouraging every one of our elected officials to do as much outreach as they can in as many creative ways as we can. You know, I was one of the people who pushed for our bus system to put bus surveys in our bus when we're looking at changing routes to hear from the people who actually ride on those buses instead of just the people who show up at a public hearing. And so as we move forward, especially with our diverse community, and I represent one of the most diverse communities in the county, we have to use every tool in our toolbox to reach out to as many people as we can and accept input from all sectors of the uh, community in whatever way they find comfortable connecting with their local government. Thank you to all of you. 50 minutes moves very quickly, doesn't it? We are just about out of time, and we are going to move to closing statements. Um, you'll have one minute and 15 seconds for your closing statements, and I ask you to really be specific about what separates you from the other people sitting around this table. Our order is going to be starting with Mr. Chapman and going to Mrs. Pleuropolis, to Mr. McKay, and to Mr. McElveen. You may begin. Thank you. I took an alternative path in life. My, uh, my mother never graduated from high school, and my father dropped out, of high, dropped out of school in the eighth grade. I didn't go to college. But from that, I built a successful real estate development company. I provided gu guidance to governors, and I've chaired the board of a $13 billion agency. I don't talk about my past to evoke some kind of you know, tear-jerking response, but rather to express context in where I've come from and who I am. At the end of the day, being Having been homeless, having seen my mother live in a car, and being it where I am now provides me a vision of the abyss that stands in between poverty and security. It's that view that I think the next Fairfax County Board Chair needs. It's that view that can, that can move this county forward. To go from where I was to where I am now takes an unbelievable drive and fight and an insatiable intellectual curiosity. And that's what I'll bring to the Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. And I thank you for your time. Thank you. Thank you. We need smart, driven, ethical people in office. Um, unfortunately, I think we often use experience to mean that we need people who are climbing the political ladder. Unfortunately, I think that keeps women and people of color out of the process because we're not interested in climbing the political ladder. We're interested in making an impact and improving people's lives. As a Georgetown law professor, I've worked with small businesses, startups, and nonprofits. I bring a real world experience uh, to this position, an experience that is undeniable. And when I look at Fairfax County, I see our economic prosperity reaching some, but not all. Uh, a toddler who was in diapers in 2004 is now a high schooler today. And in that same time, we have added 30,000 people have slipped into poverty. 50% of our students that graduate from Mount Vernon and Lee High School aren't college ready. And we all know that the cost of housing is outrageous. We should not be rewarding that type of decline. I'm not interested, as I said, in climbing the political ladder. I'm interested in improving these deteriorating statistics. Thank you. 
Mr. McKay. Well, I'm a lifetime Fairfax County resident, and I'm really proud of this county. Um, frankly, uh, as I go door to door and talk to people, uh, we have challenges in the county, but we have enormous opportunities, and we've been an economic success model for the United States of America statistically in so many categories. This is a great place to live. Uh, many of our statistics support that. I would not be running for chairman if I didn't think there were things that we needed to continue to work on, and I would not be running for chairman if I didn't think I had a lifetime of experience to be able to do the things that are ahead of us. I'm proud of my record on the Board of Supervisors. I'm proud of the things that we've been prioritized and things that we've been able to accomplish through my bold leadership on so many areas that we've talked about here today. Um, this is not a time to take a chance uh, to elect somebody who doesn't know how to run the county. Legislative initiatives are important, but this county also must be governed. And I have the experience to do that and set us on a course of success uh, moving forward, tackle some of the issues that are still out there for us to tackle. But I'm proud of this county that so many people have built together as an inclusive, successful place that is progressive and on the front lines of so many of our challenges. And we'll tackle the rest of the stuff with my leadership. Thank you. And Mr. McElveen. I was born and raised in Fairfax County, and I bring with me a, a desire to run for the position of chairman because I have a love for this place and its people. Throughout my career on the school board, I've been county, a countywide representative. I've represented everyone in this county, and I think I've done well, but you can be the judge of that. I've represented, I've overseen more of our budget than anyone else running for this office, with 53% of the budget being allocated to schools. I have a proven progressive record of leadership throughout my entire career on the school board. And I am bringing with me in this campaign a desire to bring education, innovation, and opportunity to all of our residents so that everyone in our county can achieve the American dream. I hope you will join me. My website is McElveenforchairman.com. Thank you very much. Um, you all gave wonderful closing statements, and you gave them quickly which means we actually have two more minutes until we have to wrap up. Um, I'm going to ask you again, and this time I'm going to give you 30 seconds each to let us know what is the distinctive that uh, separates you from the other people at the table. And I'm going to start here and move this way. Mr. Chapman. I think what separates me from the other people at Oh, sorry. Thank you. I think what separates me from the other people at this table is I'm the only one sitting at this table that has actually chaired a multi-billion dollar board. Virginia Housing Development Authority controls close to $13 billion in assets. It is a widely varying complex organization with good people who have passionate views on how to achieve the same mission. And as chair, I was able to uh, uh, wrangle those people into a focused decision-making process. Great. And as Thank the you. Fairfax County Chair, I will do the same. Thank you. The thing that distinguishes me is that I'm the lawyer running, and that's often actually not the case uh, in a lot of contested races. Um, but I'll bring that legal expertise. I also have expertise, as I said before, in real estate finance and in corporate finance. I actually am also the only uh, person at this, t at this uh, debate who works very closely with small businesses in the private sector and I can bring my expertise in bringing them into the fold and innovating for Fairfax County. Thank you. Mr. McKay. Uh, what separates me is a lifetime commitment to this county uh, and I think as we move forward it's important to look at what stakeholders in our community have to say about our candidates. Uh, I've been proud in this campaign to be endorsed by all of our labor unions, by the Sierra Club, by Governor McAuliffe, by a lot of elected officials that I've built relationships of success with delivering for the people of Fairfax County. It's been a lifetime commitment that I've been proud of because I love this county. Those relationships and those endorsements are what make this different. Thank you. And Mr. McElveen. Jeff has a lot of endorsements, but the only endorsement that matters is you. And I will be looking for that vote uh, later this year. Uh, but what makes me unique is that I bring an international perspective that uh, everyone else at these tables does not. I have worked across cultures, and I will continue bringing that perspective to Fairfax County. Thank you. Whoever you support, vote like your future depends on it. I'm Pastor Sarah Scherschlicht. Thank you, and good night.